In the middle of night, in the middle of nowhere, two cars slightly cross over the white line in the center of the road. They collide, and a fair amount of damage is done, but neither of the drivers are hurt. It becomes impossible to pin the blame for the accident on either party since they both crossed that center middle line. The drivers get out of their car. One is a doctor and the other is a lawyer. The lawyer calls the police and says they'll be here in about 20 minutes. It's cold and it's damp that night. Both men are shaken up. The lawyer asks the doctor, If he'd like a drink of brandy from his hip flask, the doctor accepts the brandy, drinks, and then hands it back to the lawyer, who then puts it away. Aren't you going to have a drink, says the doctor. The lawyer replies, after the police get here and leave. Ouch. (laughs) This morning we read from the letter of James, one of the earliest Christian writings, This letter has been accredited to James, the brother of Jesus, who after the resurrection would continue to share the gospel in Jerusalem. James' letter today focuses on patience and wisdom to be the foundation of one's faith. He said, you must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak slow to anger. James's focus is on the Christian character. It reminds me of words in our prayer book that says, Lord, open our lips and let our mouths proclaim your praise. And when I say these words, I make this gesture, Lord, open our lips and let our mouths proclaim your praise. This reminder that sometimes we need to close our lips in order for Christ to unlock them from within our heart before we speak. In today's gospel, Jesus told these Pharisees, that is, the teachers of the law, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, for it is written, the people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Then Jesus calls his disciples, those crowds that have gathered around, and says to them, listen to me, all of you, and understand that there's nothing outside of the person going in that can defile, but the things that come out is what defiles. For it is within that evil intentions can come. Again, our scripture calls us to be patient. And when we speak to choose our words wisely so that they reflect the heart of faith in God's law, which reveals always as a character of love. This helps us to move from an individual approach of self-focus to one of building up through our efforts of being part of a larger community. And this takes enormous amount of work, more difficult than any job that we might have in our daily lives. As we sit here today in the midst of a holiday weekend, a holiday celebrating those who have labored for the greater good of our neighbors. I'm drawn to the words of Samuel Gompers, who's the founder and longtime president of the American Federation of Labor, who said, Labor Day differs from every other holiday of the year in our country. All other holidays are more or less a degree connected with conflicts, battles won over man's prowess over another, or glories achieved of one nation over another. But Labor Day is devoted to no man, living or dead, no sect or race or nation. Labor Day, as he continues, 
constitutes a yearly national tribute to the workers who have made through strength and prosperity a well-being of our country. It's this well-being of our community in which God calls us to think about God and our neighbor over ourselves. Has that ever happened? I once heard an economist explain that, in his view, America was its most productive when we were just starting out as a country. Everyone then provided some service needed in that village or community that they lived in, and that people often traded their services with each other. People took care of each other, showing the heart of being community. And that people, for the most part, although there were many hardships, lived happily, as James shares in his letter today, because every generous act of giving was a perfect gift that came from outside of them as individuals, and one can say came from above. Surely they gave a sip of brandy to a neighbor who was cold because they cared for them, not wanting to change the outcome for their own benefit of life. And this is why we pray, Lord, open our lips and let our mouths proclaim your praise. It's like locking up first our self-focus and then asking Christ's words to unlock his love from within our own hearts so that we can then share that with the world, that that's what they will hear, and that's what we will speak, and that's how we will treat each other. Seventh century theologian Venerable Bede wrote, the principal seat of the soul, according to Plato, is the brain. But according to Christ, it is the heart. There are people who work and live to succeed without the care and concern with others through the brain. And the dilemma is how they might outsmart one another, as the lawyer did to the doctor and also as the Pharisees and scribes are trying to do today to Jesus in the gospel. You see, Jesus came into our world aware of this human character flaw and was drawing people back into community with God, which also meant drawing them back into community with each other. Knowing that good well, like all drivers, we make minor mistakes along the way from time to time, but the key is acknowledging when those mistakes happen so that we can prevent further hurt from occurring. It's this ownership, this sense of building a strong sense of character, not just for ourselves, but for our community and for every walk of life in which we engage that we become people of community with hearts that want to be full citizens that are spreading goodness. To unwit others means, as Jesus' quote, Isaiah today, these peoples honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Instead, it's this invitation that we strive to mark our purpose as continually remember that the heart is where great characters are born, where they work, where they live, where they allow God to act out through them. Amen.